do you are you interested in citizen science, and do you see any crossover at all with the philosophy of open science? Um, I think it's incredibly important, and it's a it's a massive area that we need to to be able to focus on, understand, and work with better for the future. So, um, the whole point about open approaches, from my perspective, as I say, is it's the unexpected contribution, um, and the unexpected contribution often comes from out of the field. It certainly doesn't have to come from a professional researcher. So there are two different really important aspects to me that link um, openness to citizen science. I mean, I would, I would actually go further and just say public engagement um, in general terms. Um, one is that um, open access is not just about access to the final stamped output, it's about access into the process of um, respecting a, an interested public's right um, to be engaged with the process of the research. Um, and I think that's something we definitely need to work on. But it's something we need to work on not just from the perspective of keeping the public happy, um, because, you know, well, aside from the fact that we are the public, you know, drawing this dividing line is not particularly helpful. But I think the other thing is that as we move to what is almost inevitably a smaller, um, smaller funding settlement for research science, um, and particularly for some of the kinds of science that are um, large-scale data collection of a type that doesn't involve large, expensive instrumentation, um, then we need to engage interested people because otherwise we're just not going to be able to do the research. And there's this incredible resource of interested people out there, or potentially interested people out there, um, who could contribute in a meaningful way if we gave them the opportunity. Um, and at the same time would then become you know, the strongest advocates for research in the community. It's, it's, it, it works for everybody. It works, it works in, both, in both directions. So, so there's a whole different series of levels that this can take place at. I think there's a very strong argument in any case that we need to reconfigure to make our research process and projects completely open, we need to seriously look at reconfiguring our efforts to try and standardise and modularise the parts of the research process, to the extent that we can, to the extent that it's appropriate. Um, but an awful lot of research can now be done in parts with standardised inputs and outputs. Um, that can make the research process itself more efficient in and of itself. But equally, as soon as you do that, um, you open up um, a market of sorts for um, the attention of people who can bring something to that. If you say, I need an X, and it turns out that there's somebody in a, a village in Oxfordshire who can provide X, whether it's um, a particular type of analysis, um, a particular sample, um, or it's just the time to sit there and look at 50 images and say which ones they think are the most interesting. Um, then you provide an opportunity for people to become involved. So at that level, there's a structural thing we need to think about in terms of the process of, of research projects. That opens us up to both um, private commercial contributions, which may or may not be more efficient than what we can do in-house. Um, but it opens up you know, a wide range of things to a much wider range of contributors. And and that can range from the Galaxy Zoo style, will create a space in which pretty much anyone can come in and do something that's fun and, and looks interesting and, and, and does contribute over time just through you know, sheer scale of numbers. Um, and that's a perfectly valid way of doing things. Right through to the, I've got this analysis problem and it turns out that there's an interested software developer who wants to do some stuff in their spare time who finds that interesting and can drop in and provide some help there. Um, and then there's a whole range of things in between. And I think we've got to figure out how to... The stuff in between is the hardest, because the, the Galaxy Zoo style experience um, 
provides some very sharp lessons in how you can ethically use people to do things. Um, and those things become harder to implement as you're going to smaller and smaller scale, but they become more important to implement because you're using more of the time of less people. Um, or more, of, they, they become, not, not they don't become more important to implement, they be, but they become you know, absolutely critical to get right. And at the same time, the projects are moving to a scale and a degree of publicity where it looks like it's easy to set one of these things up. Um, and there's an awful lot, there's a graveyard of these projects that were poorly conceived, um, didn't really do useful science and wasted people's time. And that's not really acceptable. It's not gonna, gonna help anybody. Um, so there's a lot of lot of things to to um, to work through there, but the only way we're going to be able to work through them is by being transparent and open. You know, you can't start the project unless you make the data available to people to contribute. Um, you certainly can't ask people to contribute and then not let them read the paper. Um, and so the whole cultural infrastructure that needs to be built around that, um, I think, absolutely depends on openness, and it depends on an understanding of what we mean by being open, that includes not just pushing stuff out um, onto the web, but also accepting that there's a way for contributions to come back in, um, and particularly the ones that are unexpected. Um, that's the hardest thing to engineer. So Michael Nielsen has this wonderful term of um, redesigning the architecture of, for assigning expert attention. Um, and the problem is, and this is a concern that people raise, is that if you open up everything to everybody, then you're going to get an awful lot of people making not particularly helpful contributions. And that's a real challenge. I mean, that's a, that this has particularly been an, area, an issue in climate science. Um, so how do you create the systems that protect the time of the experts you're investing in with a public investment, but at the same time ensure that the valuable contributions can find their way into that system. And again, I think there's lots of lessons to be learnt there from the social web. Um, and that actually, if we could learn the lessons, might actually solve some problems on the social web as well. <laughs>